Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. My name is AJ H here to take you through today's video. Today's video is going to be called TSMC and why I feel it's getting screwed over by the United States. So without further ado, let's carry on with the show. There's no doubt that TSMC makes a lot of money. Um, they are the world's biggest chip maker. So let's look at some, num some numbers, shall we? For the three months ended June 30, 2022, revenue was 534.14 billion Taiwanese dollars. That works out about 18.16 billion, a rise of 43.5% year on year. Net income was 237.03 billion Taiwanese dollars, and that works out about 8 to 9 billion um, US dollars, up 76.4% year on year which is ahead of estimates. So there's no doubt that TSMC has been making a lot of money. It's a very successful company. It is the number one chip making fab out there. But if you look at the actual stocks, the stock has been going down. So what gives? Why is such a successful company making loads of money, number one in the world in chip fab making, why is the stocks actually gone down? Well, I'm going to discuss this in this video, and I'm also going to discuss why TSMC is being screwed over by the United States. Number one, Biden's chip bill. So one of the main reasons TSMC's stock has been going down, you can see that a lot of company, companies have been uh, cancelling orders. These are major TSMC orders. So you've got companies like MediaTek, Advanced Micro Devices Incorporated, Qualcomm, Nvidia. They've scaled a lot of their orders, citing uh, JP Morgan, Chase and Co report. So why would they um, scale back their orders? Let me tell you that scaling back the orders is not really good news for TSMC because as you can see, the order has cut, has led TSMC to shut down four extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography machines, which roll out high-end chips, report says. And those of you who don't know, EUV lithography machines are very, very expensive. We're talking about each machine costing millions and millions. So basically, there's going to be millions and millions worth of machines just gathering dust and this is not really good news for TSMC. So why did those companies um, cut orders? Well, one of the main reasons, it says, US government has instructed NVIDIA and AMD not to supply their high-end graphic processing units to China, which uh, a move which has also hurt demand, the, the report says. So you, re recently, NVIDIA created some AI chips which are top of the range. Um, they, they obviously spent a lot of money researching the product and going into mass production, AMD the same. However, the US government has basically forced them not to sell these chips to China. So I gotta ask you a, a thing, guys. When you are a company and you spend so much money on research and development, you create a great product, and then suddenly the US government tells you not to sell your product to your biggest market. And the biggest market is China at the moment. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Then obviously your stocks and shares will go down because you are pretty much limited in what you can sell. And you could ask yourself, what is the point of researching these high-end products when you can't sell them? What's the point, right? So, um, so this is what's happened. This is one of the main reasons. So the report says four of those major clients accounted for more than 30% of TSMC's total sales. That is a huge number, a huge number. You're talking about a third of your business. Lose, you're losing a third of your business, which is a huge number. And going back to the stocks, you can see that TSMC stocks has been going down uh, for about a year now. The highest, it was around 140, around January, February time, and now it's gone to around 80, uh, it's closed on 80.64. So going from 140 all the way down to 80, that is a loss of around 57% to 60%. 
And the report says that TSMC's capital expenditure is expected to fall 36 billion in 2023 from an expected 40 billion in 2022. So it appeared that the report about TSMC's clients cutting orders stunned the market, pushing the stock price even further down. However, there are other issues as well. The cost of creating these high end chips has become very, very expensive. And if you cannot sell your high end, high end chips to uh, the biggest market, for example, in China, then there's going to be a major problem. The reason it's really expensive to create high end chips now is for many reasons. The cost of raw materials has increased. And one of the raw materials that TSMC needs or these machines need is neon. And Ukraine used to create 75% of the world's neon. And those uh, factories have been shut down or destroyed. One of them used to be in Mariupol. And um, that's one of the main reasons neon prices have gone up by ten, tenfold. Um, so there's that reason. Other uh, raw materials that TSMC needs to create these chips are in very, very short demand. Water is also in very short demand as well because of the droughts happening all over the world. Water has become a very, very expensive and is very short in demand as well, and many other ingredients. So it's become very expensive to make these chips. The EUV machines itself are very expensive machines, cost millions and millions. Uh, and the other factor is the rise of Chinese chips. China has been creating a lot of chips using their DUV technology. The difference between DUV and EUV technology is huge. However, the DUV technology is much cheaper. Uh, China has managed to grab a lot of these DUV machines from ASML and from second-hand se second -hand markets. So it's much easier and cheaper for them to create a lot of chips. And cheap, much cheaper than um, TSMC. The cost for TSMC is very, very huge compared to these DUV chips that are coming out of China. And most of the chips coming out of China are about 28 nanometers. However, they have started, um, or they will be starting mass production of 14 nanometer chips. And a company called SMIC has started selling 7 nanometer chips as well. So they are very close. Obviously, they haven't got the EUV machines in China yet. But you've got to understand that most products don't need um, the high-end chips. Um, for example, uh, your fridges, your EV cars, your IoT devices, a lot of everyday stuff requires the 28 nanometers and that's enough. Um, the high-end chips mainly go onto phones uh, for military, uh, for example, F-35 jets. Um, other high-end stuff like high-end computers, high-end servers, things like that. So they're very, very exclusive and very rare. Uh, majority of the chips need are 28 nanometers, and what that's what the market needs right now. The big EV uh, industry had a big chip shortage not so long ago, but all of these EV cars needed 28 nanometers ones, not the high-end 5 nanometers ones. So China is catching up with its chip technology. Not quite there yet. Still, they're still a quite a few years behind uh, TSMC. However, they have caught up in uh, 28 nanometers level, and that's what mainly the industry needs at the moment. So as a summary, this uh, chip bill has affected TSMC's business and this is one way the US has screwed over TSMC. So let's move on to number two. Number two, subsidies. So TSMC is currently building a chip fab in Arizona, which they're going to create five nanometers chips in. Uh, it's still being built at the moment. However, there's also an Intel factory in uh, Arizona and looks like um, that's almost finished. Um, it's costing them around 20 billion. The one TSMC is making is around 12 billion. However, the costs are rising due to many external factors, which I'm gonna explain later on. So Intel is obviously uh, got a factory in Arizona as well. And uh, many other chip factories seems to be building their fabs in Arizona. 
The problem is the subsidy. TSMC was promised a huge subsidy uh, by opening up a plant in the United States, in Arizona. However, there seems to be question marks on whether TSMC will get that subsidy or how much. And you can see from this article here, Chips Act could see Intel takes the lion's share with TSMC Arizona plant a lower priority. And you know, recently they approved a 52 billion funding to boost US chip production. However, you can see that if their aim is to ensure US chip makers are up to speed with far more advanced capabilities of players like TSMC and Samsung, then Intel will need all the help it can, it can get. It has been lagging well behind in the technology, lost Apple as a customer. And so you can see here that Intel alone hopes to secure nearly a third of the total for two fabs under construction in Arizona, for two of which is close to breaking ground. So you can see here that Intel is looking to take most of this funding and TSMC and Samsung will probably going to be fighting for scraps. Looks like all the American fabs are going to get all of their priority and they are even not sure how much subsidies they're going to get. There is other problems as well. TSMC's Arizona plant raises national security concerns, says uh, politicians. So recently, with everything that's going on in Taiwan, there seems to be quite a few um, lobbyists or senates which are basically you know, raising security concerns about TSMC. And their security concerns are that if um, there is a war on the Taiwanese Strait, and China managed to reunify itself with the Taiwanese island. So there could be a huge security risk um, for the United States. And this is why they are putting TSMC as a very low priority when it comes to funding. And they might not even get any funding at all, the way things are looking right now. I want to take you back to this article again. While the construction of TSMC's Arizona plant is well advanced, the company has said that the project was proving more expensive than anticipated. It has indicated that subsidies could determine the pace of development there. And guess what? This is the latest. TSMC's Arizona Fab reportedly runs into construction delays. So it looks like the lack of funding or the lack of subsidies has, um, is making delays in this plant. And whenever there's delays, and uh, you've got to look at how long it's taking. The project is said to be three to six months behind schedule. Whenever there's delays, there's always cost overruns, you know. And right now, in the construction sector, everything is very expensive. All the raw materials are very expensive due to the high cost of living, due to the inflations. So any construction project going on in the world right now, you will find that your construction costs have more than doubled or even tripled in some areas. So really is a wrong place, wrong time to do any massive construction works right now. So like um, the CEO of TSMC said, you know, their pace of construction will depend on the subsidies. They still to this day have not received any subsidies and you can see there's uh, construction delays going on. So what excuses are they making for the delays? And you can see here, it has fallen three to six months behind schedule due to a mixture of labor shortages, COVID-19 surges, surges, and complexities in obtaining construction licenses. But it's much more than that. Everyone knows that. It's down to the inflation as well, the cost of living. Everything is very, very expensive right now. And things could get delayed even further fact that they're not getting any subsidies until now is also making things difficult. So the promises that TSMC that the United States had made um, saying if they open up a fab in Arizona they would get a lot of subsidies. So far they have not got any subsidies and doesn't look like they will get it due to security concerns. So this is the second reason why TSMC have been screwed over by the United States. So I want to take you to some um, 
comments some users have said why there's delays in the TSMC plant. One particular guy has said that Intel decided to expand its Arizona facilities at the same time, which means TSMC and Intel are fighting for similar resources, similar equipment, and we can talk about water as well as a resource. Um, Arizona's labor pool will remain strained in 2022 as companies continue to seek qualified talent amidst record low unemployment. And also this guy has said, um, I work in the semiconductor industry, one of TSMC's competitors, and I live in Phoenix. Contrary to what you believe, the labor shortage in semiconductor is not only real, it's chronic. The pandemic didn't cause it, but certainly didn't help. Semiconductor pays very well, even for its contractors, and even high pay is not enough to fix the labor shortage in the industry is facing. So there does seem to be a lot of um, labor shortages, skills, uh, which, which is an issue, but also resources as well by the looks of it. Intel and TSMC are fighting for similar resources. However, Intel will get all of these resources because Intel is an American company and TSMC is viewed as an outsider. So number three, skill shortage. So there's a website called Glassdoor and one of the things that Glassdoor does, it gives a review of companies and it's really interesting how a lot of users basically give review of what it's like working for that particular company. And I wanna concentrate on TSMC and one particular thing I found with TSMC is the reviews have not been very good. It seems to be a very difficult environment to be working in. And you can see here, cons, long working hours, high stress in 103 reviews, high pressure in the working environment in 80 reviews. Um, other good things, it has good salary with profit sharing, re relatively high salary in Taiwan, which is understandable. But then you've got all of this um, long working hours, high stress, high pressure. You've got to think about the pros and the cons. Is it really worth it? So let's look at some of these reviews. And you can see here, former, former employee has said, sweatshop environment managed by fear, fab workers not treated with respect. Senior management is clueless, unsafe working environment, poor focus on safety. If you're not Taiwanese, you are a second class citizen. So let's work on the next guy. Cons, managers don't know software, don't understand how the program works. No development chance for engineers to continue learning the new technology. No career plan for engineers. Managers don't care about your life. Still use Delphi 7, very unstable middleware to a database. Every so blah, blah, blah. Wow, this guy's given a big list. I don't have time to go through all of this. Um, cons, they are stingy with the money towards those with experience. ESP is a subsidy. You get taxed on that, bonus structure. So you can see there seems to be a lot more cons there are, there are you know, than pros. Cons, arrogant uh, culture, overtime working, high pressure. And, you know, that's all I'm seeing with TSMC cons. After some honest reviews posted by a few engineers who traveled overseas to Taiwan for training, I expected leadership to hear and implement changes. And you can see huge kind of essays written by past employees, which are not very good. And, uh, you know, every single, you know, all of these people are given one star, one star. There's so many one star reviews for TSMC. And I, I, was, I find it really interesting to read all these reviews and most of it has been one star. So you can see um, that there is a huge labor shortage and the work culture in Taiwan is a lot different from the work cult culture in the United States. The Taiwanese look like they're very um, worked very hard, a lot of overtime, uh, a lot of high pressure with the Americans be able to do something like that in, a, in Arizona, I'm not sure. They are having a very shortage of those kind of skills in the United States at the moment. So what's United States going to do? Are they going to poach a lot of people from Taiwan? Because I'm hearing reports that there are a lot of Taiwanese who have been poached from Taiwan 
to work in the United States, especially work not only just for TSMC, but also for Intel. So there's a lot of skills and talent being stolen from TSMC, a lot of skills and talent being stolen from Samsung. Some of them are going to China as well, but most of them are coming to the United States. So that is another way in which TSMC is being screwed over by the United States. Number four, chip four. So the chip four is something the Biden administration has created as part of this chip bill. And it includes TSMC, includes Samsung, Intel as well. And basically these are the four biggest fab companies in the world uh, coming together, making up rules, regulations and, and things like that. And, and also making sure they do not sell to China. They do not open factories in China as well. So it's a very restrict, restrictive um, chip for bill. However, the funny thing is, TSMC is not being invited to the chip four meetings. And I just find it absolutely hilarious. So they call it the chip four, but they are not inviting TSMC, um, who is the biggest chip maker in the, in the world. And it seems to me that it's a, it's a very suspicious thing. And, and I feel that they're just using TSMC and they're using TSMC to get as much knowledge transfer as possible and they are going to dump TSMC because they do not trust TSMC. They know that if there's a war in the Taiwanese Strait, if uh, China reunifies um, Taiwan with the mainland, then there is a huge problem for the United States. And I think they realize that and they are starting to cut off TSMC from meetings. And this is not good for TSMC. And uh, this is another way US is looking to screw over TSMC. So number five is water. So you can see with this article, why Intel and TSMC are building water dependent chip factories in one of the driest US states. So you're probably asking the same question. Why, is, why are they building fabs in Arizona, which is a desert? And what do you lack in deserts obviously water so why the heck are they building uh, fabs in um, arizona number one is probably cheap and there's probably tax cuts and things like that and um, a lot of companies from los angeles have been moving to texas uh, and, and you know around arizona and that kind of area for tax breaks and it's become cheaper uh, tesla is one of them obviously so they're probably following the same pattern. However, they haven't realized that there's a real, real lack of water in, um, in that part of the world. Lake Mead, Lake Powell and the Colorado River are drying out very, very heavily. Um, it's become very, very bad at the moment. Um, and if I look at um, this report in 2008, in 2008, they have said that there is a 50% chance that it will go dry by 2021. 50% chance. And guess what? We're on 2022 right now. It hasn't gone dry, but it's getting dry. Very, very much so. And it's got so dry that they are saying that Lake Mead water level shows it could turn into Deadpool within next year. And Deadpool is when... It goes so low that the dam cannot use it for power generation. So there, there's a major dam in that part of the world called the Hoover Dam. And the Hoover Dam provides electricity to all of these companies and would have provided electricity to TSMC, would have provided um, electricity to Intel. So that part of the world, you know, hydroelectric power, which Hoover Dam was providing is going to shut down maybe by next year if the water levels continue to go down as, as fast as they are going. However, there's other issues as well. And you can see here, the Grand Canyon may not seem the obvious place for a chip foundry since the high-tech manufacturing plants guzzle millions of gallons of water every single day. And this is not seawater, this is ultra clear water. 
you know this is processed water that you need you cannot be sea water or anything like that Arizona receives just 13.6 inches of rainfall on average per year between 1970 and 2000 and you can see there's not much water going on and if you've seen the news you would have seen that Lake Powell, Lake Mead are absolutely disappearing and this is a picture showing what Arizona is like and they are stupid enough to build fabs in this area I just can't believe it not only TSMC is building one but Intel is almost finished building one as well. So they're going to be competing with each other for resources. They're going to be competing for water. They're going to be competing with, for power. They're going to be competing for skills as well. So it just doesn't make any sense. And um, guess what? You know, when there's a competition going on between two companies, one of them is a U.S. company on U.S. soil and the other one isn't, guess which company is going to get the um, preferred treatment? Intel, obviously. So if Intel, being an American company, they would probably get all of the preferred benefits and TSMC will be stuck um, getting whatever crumbs it can get. So really, really bad decision to build a fab in that part of the world. And they are saying by 2030, 2035 the whole of Lake Mead and Lake Powell would go completely dry so what they're gonna do then are they gonna transfer water from one part of US to another it's gonna cost them much much more and I just don't understand the thinking behind how TSMC could have been that fool in it, foolish enough to build a fab uh, in that area and they'll find out by the time this time next year when the lakes almost uh, dried up, when it reaches Deadpool level, that they will really, really regret it. Number seven, the special military operation in Ukraine. So this conflict has caused a lot of issues around the world supply chains. And one of the issues it's caused is with neon gas. Neon was 75% or 80% created in Ukraine. And these factories have shut down. One of them was in Mariupol. And um, that caused a major problem in the world. And you can see the cost of neon has risen more than tenfold. And guess what? Russia is another country which produces neon and they have banned it from um, going into unfriendly countries. So this is bad news for companies such as TSMC who rely on neon and this is why costs of chip making especially um, advanced chips has become very very expensive for them and this has become this year their inventories for neon will only last until the end of the year and they will have to find other alternatives by by next year and guess what guess what ASML seeks to replace Ukrainian neon gas. A Chinese company has passed the certification. So it looks like it's gone a full circle, absolute full circle. So here they are trying to ban all of these products. This chip bill uh, was created purely as an anti-Chinese bill. They're trying to ban these chip products from going into China, from building factories in China. But guess what? They still need the Chinese. They still need the Chinese for neon gas. I mean, it's just you just cannot make this crap up. Seriously, what you know? Here you have um, the United States and all of these uh, chip for companies doing everything they can to um, stop um, technology going into China and stuff like that. Yet they want uh, neon gas from China. They're like, oh, we're gonna sanction you with all of these um, sanctions, except. Can you uh, give us some neon gas, please? We'd really appreciate it. You still, we can't sell you any chips, but you know we need the neon gas from you. So if that's okay, so it's absolutely ridiculous. And even ASML, as a company who produces DUV machines, EUV machines, um, the USA has actually asked them not to sell DUV machines to China anymore because China has uh, managed to get up to the seven nanometer stage. Uh, using the DUV machines and now ASML uh, are asked not to sell these DUV machines to China. So why are 
Why is the rest of the world not creating neon gas then? Well, first of all, to create neon gas is, is a very heavy pollutant um, process. The reason Ukraine did it, because Ukraine wasn't following any guidelines, there's no government guidelines on pollution and factories, they can pretty much do what they wanted. Um, and a lot of EU, company, uh, EU companies cannot get away with what U Ukraine was doing. Uh, Russia did it, uh, can do it, because they don't follow the EU rules, uh, nor does America, uh, nor does uh, China. So this is why only a few con countries can do it. Uh, other countries cannot do it because of um, pollution rules, po pollution um, laws and things like that. So, um, so on one hand they want to block the Chinese and on the other hand they'll, they still need the Chinese for raw materials. It just doesn't make sense. You can't make this up guys. And finally the other way the US is screwing over TSMC is because TSMC's days are numbered and their days are numbered because new technology is coming into the market which is going to put them absolutely redundant and this technology is called the NIL technology or the NIL technology and is created using a Japanese company and this Japanese company doesn't need to follow any US rules or regulations for example, ASML has to because a lot of the technology is trademarked, um, American trademarks. So it's, it uses a lot of American technology. Um, so when America tells ASML you cannot sell to China, ASML has to follow those rules because um, they, are, they are basically under contract and the, these are all trademarked, American trademarks. So they have to follow these rules. However, this Japanese company doesn't need to follow any US trademarks, it doesn't need to follow any US guidelines or, san or be scared of any sanctions. This is a completely new, new technology and they are able to go straight to 5 nanometers. And the best thing about this new technology, it, it only costs 10% of the cost to make uh, 5 nanometers chips and it only uses 10% of the power. So imagine um, a machine where you can go straight to 5 nanometers with 10% of the power um, needed and only 10% of the cost. So all these equipment that TSMC bought, like millions and millions of pounds worth of EUV machines, most of it is laying on the shelf now because they've lost a lot of business recently. So most of it is going to be gathering dust. They're not going to be able to replace the, that work or those, those companies anytime soon. And they're going to be gathering dust until somebody puts in more orders or these companies put in more orders. But that's not going to happen until they change this uh, chip rule. So all of these millions of pounds of, um, of equipment that TSMC has bought as investment. Imagine if um, countries such as Japan or China started uh, using NIL technology instead and going straight to 5 nanometers. And imagine all of the, the cost they would save and they would be able to sell these chips on a cheaper, cheaper price around the world. So they'll be able to sell it um, much much cheaper than their competition which means TSMC will lose a lot of business and all of that equipment that they've bought would have been a waste because um, if the rest of the world starts using this new technology then what is the point of EUV technology anymore there, there is no point you know the, the thing is technology moves very fast and you know one day you're at the top yeah you know, but some, somewhere along the line somebody will innovate a new method or a new way to do things much better much cheaper and and this is that new technology um, the company in Japan is called um, Kyoxa and they're already testing it and they're looking at releasing it within the next few years so it's very very close um, so I just wanted to kind of end with that I mean the US has basically as a summary, the US has basically put all of these rules and regulations on TSMC. They're making TSMC open a fab in Arizona only to use them for their knowledge transfer. 
Um, TSMC are pretty much taking it like a chump. Um, they are say, they are saying yes to every single US demand. I, I just don't know why. You know, I wish they had a bit of balls and to say no at some point. But they have been absolutely used and abused by the United States. And I don't know if they can see it. I don't know if people in Taiwan can see it. I don't know if people in TSMC can see it. But, you know, really, you guys need to wake up. You know, if you said no, what is the US going to do? You know, you guys are the biggest chip makers in the world, making tons of money. And what's the US going to do? I mean, you can easily replace all of the US business with, with Chinese companies. I mean, there are more Chinese companies in the top uh, richest companies in the world and there are American companies uh, there's huge amounts of uh, Chinese companies who can easily fit the void but however you cannot sell to Chinese companies for example like Huawei you know with, with, with Huawei America has forced TSMC to cancel all orders with Huawei and many other companies as well who are in the blacklist I can understand why TSMC is following the US orders. I think a lot of the orders are coming straight from the top, from the Taiwanese government. And a lot of the reasons are political reasons for, ve for various reasons, uh, as you know. Um, as a business point of view, it doesn't really make sense what TSMC is doing. And, you know, it doesn't make sense at all. However, I really do hope that TSMC can one day wake up grow a couple of balls and start saying no to the United States because if they carry on doing what they do they're doing they're going to be absolutely screwed over by the United States so that brings me to the end of the video hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like share subscribe it's really important you guys watch the video to the end really helps with the algorithm and you always must like always must um, comment always must share whatever you can to help support the channel and if you really want to support me I would really appreciate it if you would join my locals or Patreon. I really need more members in there right now. Um, my membership uh, has been going down. My support has been going down lately. And also um, a lot of my videos don't get you know, monetized as well for various reasons. So I would really appreciate the support. And thanks for listening guys. And I'll see you in the next video.